I'm doing a shot, so when she start going down, I'm like, <laughs> Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, beginning with verse 14, and we're going to go to the end of the chapter. Mark chapter 11, verse 14, when you have it, just say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. Read. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Read. Scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Read. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Read. And Jesus answering, say, and Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. Verse 23. Therefore I say unto you one thing, so ever ye desire when ye pray, Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Twenty-five. And then we stand and pray for you to be a part of all sin. That your heart also, which is in heaven, may be given you to your first presence. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Twenty-seven. And then we will give you to Jerusalem, and as he will walk in the temple, And say unto him, By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? Read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask them one question, and answer them. And I will tell you by the authority I will do these things. The baptism of John. Was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. Read. And What if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. Verse 33 all together. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We did not tell. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Father, I thank you that in these brief minutes you will think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. Lord, that it would be all of you and none of me. I choose to be crucified, that you would be glorified, and that your people would be edified. That there be a grace on the hearers to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And I thank you for the oracle, the oracle of God that will go forth uninterrupted and unchecked by any satanic or demonic force. And we thank you for these things in the matchless name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen, and amen. 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 We're talking about commanding your victory, commanding your victory, and how uh, it says over here, Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that's a problem, an obstacle, a situation that Distasteful. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, 
Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. There's a statement by an a English brother uh, named Smith Wigglesworth that goes this way. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. And I believe God. Amen. 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 So, uh, we've said this over and over again, but uh, as people of God, uh, we believe God, and, and we're, we're, we, we're constantly uh, inundating and saturating ourselves with the Word of God, because when you do that, what happens is you have the facts, but then there's the eternal truth of God's Word. And what we do when uh, problems arise, situations arise, we take the truth and we put it on the fact. Amen? And uh, we're not weary and well-doing. Amen? Because in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Amen. Now, some of you have a generational uh, situation. You know, when things take abnormally long, that means uh, your mom and dad didn't do too much about it. Their mom and dad didn't do too much about it. Their mom and dad didn't do too much about it. And now, uh, you come into the light that you should have. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, sickness run all through the family because it's, it can be thy will. But they don't know the will. So cancer can, continues and all kinds of other plagues continue. But you've got the light. Yeah. And so now it, it, it might be taking a little longer than you desire, but you keep the truth on the fact. Yeah. Somebody said, put the pressure on the pressure. The devil tried to put the pressure on you. You put the pressure on him. Amen. You keep your heart inundated and saturated with the word of God. Amen. And then say unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, Father, I thank you that I'm delivered from this body. I thank you that cancer will not have dominion over me. Glory to God. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. And I'm a saved son. Yeah. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Lord, I thank you for your goodness towards me. Yeah. I know you love me because you died for me and went to hell. Amen. And I'm not going to let the devil confuse me. Yeah. I thank you that my life is redeemed from destruction because you took my destruction in your body on the tree. And then you went down to hell yeah. as you were penalized for my sins and my iniquities. And so, Father, I give you glory. And I give you praise. You put the truth on the fact. Somebody say, put the truth on the fact. Put the truth on the fact. Put the pressure on the pressure. And rejoice in the Lord. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout. Y'all wake up. Now, the scripture is saying, Habakkuk 2 4, Romans 1 17, Galatians 3 11, Hebrews 10 38. The scriptures testify uh, that the redeemed of the Lord or the justified, those that have been born again, those that have been declared righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ, they live by faith. And that's just another uh, uh, way of saying we live by the word of God. We don't live by bread alone. Amen. It's getting a little later now, so lunchtime is coming up. Somebody's stomach might be growling. But we don't live by the chicken. We don't live by the sirloin. You know, we don't live by the the uh, the, uh, we, the the salmon. You know, we don't live by any of that. Amen. We live not by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of our Father. Amen. 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 I have another group for you this morning. Uh, I believe it's uh, a brother Hankins, Mark Hankins said, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. Come on. Yeah. Mm. And then he went on to say, if God wanted you to keep your mountain, he would not tell you to move it, and he would not tell you how to move it. Come on. Amen? Right. Mark 11, 23 says, you know, you say to that mountain, be removed. Whosoever, no matter who it is, Whosoever 
says to the mountain. Amen. Faith is voice activated. Faith is voice activated. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you are saying are coming to pass. It's happening. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's happening. Amen. Once, you, once you fill your heart with the word, amen, and begin to declare what God says out of your mouth, now it is happening. Yeah. Amen? amen? It shall come to pass. Yeah. Now, uh, John 6, 33 says, uh, in the world you're going to have tribulation. Temptations, testings, and trials. But he said, Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Yeah. Uh, Psalms 34, 19. It says, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah. Amen. Somebody said, well, Lord, when does it stop? Keep the pressure on the pressure. Amen. Keep the truth on the back. Amen. 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 Keep the truth on the back. Right. Amen. Amen. And fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy uh, 6 and 12. Amen. Amen. Keep the truth on the back. Amen. Amen. And, and, and discern. Let your heart discern. You need to turn your play off. This thing a little difficult. Be going to fast. That's right. Uh, you be like the lady told me one day. She said, I, I, I fasted. I said, oh, oh, you fasted? I said, how, how many days? She said, oh, no. I fasted from breakfast to lunch. <laughs> I said, okay, I said. I said, you do it around here. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I'm just scared. I said, well, we, we start somewhere. Amen. Amen. Now you're a little older. Might be good by the faith. Amen. Now we, you know, I'm kind of uh, uh, taken back by how we fast now. We used to do nothing. Amen. I know some of y'all come up and say, we did nothing. Yeah. Now we do no meat, no sweet. Well, that would, that would have been Thanksgiving for us. Yeah. <laughs> Not water. No. He asked the bishop, can we have a tic tac? I think we need one. I don't know if you need a tic tac. You might just need to stay away. <laughs> but uh, it's all good, amen. amen. But discern whether you need to fast. Yes. Amen. Half a day. If you can't make the whole day, half a day. Because some things don't, uh, some things are not loose uh, without the, the prayer and fasting element. Now remember, fasting is not for God, it's for us. Yeah. You don't change God by not eating. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, yeah. what does fast to do? It weakens the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know? You ever, you ever take a nap on a fast? No, it's how fast you take. You know? You pull all that food, you know, you toss it and turn it, you start fasting, boom, you fall right out. Amen? Because the flesh is weakening. Remember, the fast is for us, it's not for God. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So now, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, 2 Corinthians 4.13, and um, remember the Apostle Paul is uh, being clear about his temptations, testings, and trials, and then he, he lets us know um, how he's overcoming these temptations, these testings, and these trials. It says, um, let's go, let's say Corinthians chapter 4. Um, let's start with verse 3. It says, and if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, the Word of God is very clear that this gospel, this good news, and never, for, never forget that you've been redeemed by the Word of good news. It's a good news gospel. What, what, what did Jesus say? He said, uh, he said uh, when he was in the synagogue uh, over here in Luke chapter 4, he tells the people, uh, he says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. Uh, uh, in your presence. Uh, it says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. There ran out of fame throughout all 
the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. Now I said that because you gotta find your place in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You gotta find your prophecy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the safest way is to find it through the Word. Not calling somebody and ask them, do they got a word for you? If they had, I'm sure they would have called. Come on. Thank you. You know, man, I get calls all the time. Go, Prophet, what you got? What you got? I'm sitting down. I can't, I can't, I, I can't only say what the Lord taught me. You know? And I used to be nicer about it, but now I said, I'm going to read your Bible somewhere. <laughs> Testing me for a word. I can't, I can't speak. You know, you know, you know, there's a, a certain uh, for back of a uh, back of a better wording, there's a certain sensation uh, that comes over you when the spirit of prophecy comes on yeah. you, you know, and, and, and you just go with it and you lose your lips yeah. to what the Lord is saying. Amen. But don't make anybody make you prophesy. Right. Of mine. Right. You know, I know people we love and they in the jam and they asking you for a word and you want to tell them something good, just tell them scripture. That's right. Amen. 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 It's hope word. Amen. 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 But my point was, he found the place where it was written. He found himself in the word. Tell your neighbor, I'm finding myself in the word. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. Yes. What is the good news to the poor? Not just you don't have to be poor anymore, but this good news, this empowerment, this impartation of God yes. in your life. The Holy Spirit is coming in your life. And if you follow him in his word, you can't stay poor. It's good news to the poor. Yes. He's all over the world. It's a universal thing. And we are very blessed to live in the United States. Amen. You know. Because we're one of the few countries that 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 don't have as much. Or well, our poverty is, you know, not like some other countries. You know, we call poverty Section 8. <laughs> projects and all like that. I've been in certain parts of the, of the world. I would be glad to be in a project. Amen. Are you here? Yes. But uh, it says, uh, the Spirit of the Lord, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bound or bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that is the year wherein, or the, the, the segment of time, the season wherein the free favors of God profusely and lavishly abound over humanity. And we are in that time. Amen. We are in that season of great grace. Amen. And so uh, the Apostle Paul says, If our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. If it wasn't for Satan blinding people, they would see how glorious this gospel is. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. This is a glorious gospel, yeah. and you have to be blind not to see how great it is. Yeah. Now let's go down a little further to verse 8. We're talking about uh, how the Apostle Paul is overcoming all these temptations, tests, and trials in his life. He says, we are troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. Yeah. Yeah. We are perplexed. You know, what do you say when you're perplexed? I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know all the ramifications, but it happened. Yeah. 
He said, we're perplexed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. And then he says, we have the same, verse 13, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. Now, I believe, therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, Paul is quoting what David said in Psalms 116. Let's turn over there. Psalms 116, and I believe it's verse 7. Psalms 116 and verse 7. It says, Return unto thy soul, return unto thy rest. O oh, my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Yeah. So this, the Apostle Paul is quoting Psalms 116, and he says, the spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith that lifted David, lifts me. And David said, uh, he's talking to himself now, he says, return unto thy rest, O my soul. He's talking to himself. Amen. He said, all right now, mm -hmm. there's enough stress. Mm -hmm. Return to your rest. Oh, my soul. Why? The Lord has dealt bountifully with me. No matter where you are today, if you're born again, you have seen good days. You have seen blessed days. And so he says, return to your rest, oh, my soul. The Lord has dealt bountifully with me. Amen? You've delivered my soul from death, my, my eyes from tears, my feet from falling, and I'm going to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. They said, I'm not going back side because of this. You know, I'm not going back. He said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to return to my rest. I'm going to get my joy back. He's talking to himself. He said, because I believe, amen, therefore have I spoken. He said in Psalm 27, David said, I would have fainted, but, but I, I believe, you know, believing is a choice. Thomas said over there in John 20, he said, he said, I see the nail prints in his hand. And, and I see where that javelin went through his side. Thomas said, I will not believe. Believing is a choice. Yes, it is. David said, I believe. I will see the goodness of the Lord. In the land. David said, it, it, it's a little dark for me right now, but the goodness is making its way towards me. Amen. Amen. Goodness is coming toward me. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He's going to strengthen your heart. Amen. Then he says, wait, I say, on the Lord. And we said that believing is an attitude. Believing is an attitude. And speaking is the initial act of faith. So we said last week how important it is to get your believer up. We read our Bible, amen, and, and, and we understand that faith comes by hearing. It also comes by seeing, amen. It also comes by acting, amen. That's why you have to read the Bible because there's three gates to the heart. You hear me say this all the time, amen. Of course, there's the ear gate. You have the outer ear, the inner ear. The outer ear is what you hear me say to you. The inner ear is what you hear you say to you. And the inner ear is most important because what you tell you will affect you more than what I tell you. Amen. 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 You tell yourself, you know, look, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm going to keep on speaking to this mountain until it obeys me. Jesus said it would obey me, and I believe, therefore, I speak. Amen? But you also got to get your eyes on the Word of God. Amen?
Amen. You got to read it. Amen. I think sometimes people say, you know, I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I've been, have you been reading it? You know, have you written it down yet? You know, you infirm in your body. You need to pull out all the stops. Right. Amen. Amen. Or if your, if your money got cancer, you need to pull out all the stops. <laughs> Amen. Your money can be sick. It's like your body can be sick. Amen. Write those scriptures down. Amen. Sometimes I really believe that it's not that God's people uh, are not doing the right things. Many times they don't discern what season they're in and how much they got to do it. Right, right. Are you here? Amen. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to often marry somebody who's totally opposite to you. You know, you grew up in church, they grew up with no church. You know, you grew up referencing the Lord, they grew up, you know, referencing weed, medicine, tequila. That, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you, you get into a union like that, there's problems. No boom from the door. Yeah. You going to the church? I ain't going to the church. I ain't going to that church. Lord, I can't get that man all your money. What's the other man? How many cards have we got? It's my past or whatever. <laughs> I mean, we get into these unions. We get into these situations. And, you know, the, 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 the harder the situation, the more you got to discern, hey, you know, you know I, I might have to go a little over time. You know, and don't, the Bible says they that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. You know, you can't be looking at, I know Sister Gina, she coming in and out of church. I know she's fine. I smell it all. I, she don't even leave the parking lot. What does that have to do with trial testing? You know, sometimes we are we are trying to calculate things in our mind and it don't have nothing to do with the situation. Yes. Remember when uh, uh, the disciples said to Jesus, is it true that John is going to live forever? <laughs> and Jesus said, <laughs> he said, well, just what? Just watch this up. He said, if it was true, that's none of your business. Follow me. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. They said, Jesus, is it true that you're beloved John? See, they knew John called himself the beloved. John said, I got favor. Right. While they was gapping and hearing and hauling, right. John said, hmm. he fed 5,000 men with two fishes and loaves of bread. I want that favor. Right. John called himself the beloved. Yeah. Now, he wasn't talking egotistical. He, you know, he wasn't. You know, trying to make himself, he just called himself the beloved. This is John the beloved. Yes. Amen. And they couldn't kill him. Amen. They dipped him, his body in boiling oil and one time, two times, three times, John comes up out of the boiling oil unscathed, says, I'm in the spirit of the Lord today. Yes. Y'all can't do nothing with that. Yes. He had an MC hammer on you. Can't do yes. So they, they, they ushered him off into the island of Patmos, and he said, I'm on this island of Patmos, you know, where all these other malefactors are. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the island for criminals. Fend mm -hmm. for yourself. Right. And John says, I'm on the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he says, and you better believe it, I'm in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 So, 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 uh, don't compare yourself by others. Come on, man. Yeah. I know this son, she, she got this and that. You know, you know I, I know that my life was less than my mom and half the, and half the saints are praying for me. I was on every prayer list. After I got saved, I was going through her, her little, uh, I was looking for a phone number, and I saw my name next to the, the what is that, at the 700 Club? <laughs> <laughs> Numbers out in California. You know what I mean? I, I know why I was saying. You know, prayer meetings all up in the house. You can't compare yourself by you. You, you don't know. You know, since the demon didn't get the prayer all over, and daddy and Amen. Ain't that this little girl going to 
her, she is not going on. That's right. But they that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. Thank you, baby. The baby said, that's right. That's right. So now we said that faith is voice activated. Faith must speak. Now watch, watch this. And I said this last week, I'm going to say it again. But it's going to be followed by another book. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it won't ever move your mouth. If you can't get your, if you can't get your mouth in line, your mouth not going nowhere. Good. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it'll never move your mouth. That's good. Now remember this. Sound came before sight. So if you want to change your scenery, you must change your sound. Turn back over to uh, Genesis 1. We're going to do the same thing again. But I mark these verses this time. Genesis chapter 1. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I want you to say the first three words of the verse that I point out. Genesis chapter 1. Are you there yet? That's the first book of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Say it. Verse 6. Romans 11, 
29 says uh, that the gifts and the callings are without repentance. Mm -hmm. The gifts and the callings are without repentance. You say, well, what does that mean? That means God won't change his mind about his call over your life, and he won't change his mind about the gifts he gave you. So if you seem to be at an all-time low, amen, just begin to declare, amen, by faith, amen. Lord, I'm going to fulfill the call that you put on my life, and I'm going to use the gift you gave me. And just in yes. case you think I'm only speaking to the ministers, everyone in here is a minister. Yes. Ooh, you have to do, you better get busy. Yes. <laughs> you know, some scriptures, they go to church every week, they're going to talk about the bad. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I know I'm saying. <laughs> you don't talk about me like that. Without putting on the new man. But I'm just saying. You know, some saints sit in church all their life. Talk about the past. Come on. Talk about the list. Talk about the quiet. Don't even know their minutes. Don't even know when they stand before God. God didn't even know you had a you didn't even know you had a calling. Did you ever use your gifts? Somebody say, everybody go. Everybody, oh, everybody need to be quiet. Everybody need to be quiet. That's right. You call. You call to the ministry of reconciliation. That's everybody. Amen. Everybody is a minister. And the word of God says, this is a peculiar scripture that gives in the calling. Oh, it's not repentance. Yeah. Amen. I mean, God said, oh, I'm not going to change my mind. Mm. I'm not going to change my mind even if you're in the crack house or in the outhouse. You still a minister. Right. 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 Say, hey, you're a minister. You're a minister. All right. So before you judge another minister, you better make sure you on your program. <laughs> you say what the pastor ain't doing, what the minister, what the choir ain't doing. You make sure you on your program. You got enough space to clean up. <laughs> I mean, they just go on church folks. Go on. Why are you going to be judged? Yeah. Preach. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't die, don't, you know, don't marry, do nothing in church. Mm. Somebody say, Pastor, stop us. Preach, preach, preach Pastor. Preach, Pastor. I mean, ain't you no know, focus, just really in all these cities. And they didn't wonder why, I didn't, why. You know, I heard one of the ministers say recently, ministers in this church, uh, now we were just talking, and um, they said there's a disconnect. You know, many saints don't realize why you talking and doing all that thing. That, that, that's the disconnect. That's the disconnect to the money. That's the disconnect mm. to the marriage. That's the that's disconnect good. to the children of, in their powerful state. Mm. Mm. That's good. You keep on asking, you got me or is it weird? There's a disconnect. You need to ask yourself where it is. Amen. That's good. That's good. But it, this is the way I do it. I'm sure Pastor Elvis does this all the other pastors. I, when I, when I, if I'm waiting long for something, I say, Lord, I know it can't be you. Mm -hmm. So I know it's got to be me. Yeah. Now, the, the, the blame game came with the fall. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. Remember what Adam had? Adam fell and told the Lord it was a girl you gave. He would have never talked like that before the fall. <laughs> and the Lord said, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? He said, I, I'm hiding. Because I'm naked. He said, who told me you're naked? And so, uh, you know, you know, you had yeah, maybe that girl. I mean, he was still be all right. <laughs> and the Lord would have said, see, I know that he's going to tell them. He done told me. I said it was good. And he done said she mad. <laughs> I'll be doing good if you didn't give me her. And she don't talk me in and take me to I know the devil was the devil. All right. But he said, the woman you gave me. 
help me out of this stuff. The Lord said, let me go kill the animal, put some, put some clothes on my man. But notice, he didn't kill the man. He killed the animal, he didn't kill the man. Because God loves us. No matter what state we're in. And he'll always cover us. Amen. Amen. So, always remember this. That there is sound before sight. And then there's the inundating of the heart with the word of God. You don't compare yourself with others. You, no, matter, you know, matter, no matter how well you know. Uh, Pastor Mike often uh, brings up uh, the prayers of, you know, the older saints. I never even thought about that, mm -hmm. you know. How many of us are here because of the prayers of our grandparents? Yes. You know, the, our grandparents, they prayed us in. Yes. Amen. Yes. And now, you know, we're praying, we're praying our children in. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, just like some of us were in a difficult place, your children might be in a difficult place, but they're coming in. Just like I brought you in, he's going to bring them in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So do your best, leave the Lord to rest, and go to sleep. Now, let's turn over here in closing. Let's close with uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Faith in the blood. Hebrews chapter 10. Faith in the blood. It says, Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 14. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We're running out of time now. Time to close. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having the high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Now, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's go over here to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Faith in the blood will cleanse your conscience. Faith in the blood will cleanse your conscience from dead works of the flesh. Now, this is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 7, beginning with verse 10. Romans chapter 7, beginning with verse 10, he said, And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. So the Apostle Paul is saying that uh, he's talking about the condemnation that comes with the law. When you think about the Ten Commandments, think about condemnation. Now he says in verses 7 and 8, let's go up a little further. He says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for if I had not known lust, if I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. Verse 15, Romans 7, verse 15. For that which I do not allow, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. So Paul is, he's comparing this wrestling
this wrestling that, that's going on in, on the inside of him, he says that uh, since the law came, he says, you know, I, I know what's, what, what is wrong and I know what is right. He says, but it seems like the law is having a, a dominion over me. He says, because the things I really want to do, I'm not doing. And the things I don't want to do, he says, I find myself doing. And then he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Verse 24. But then he goes into, he goes into uh, Romans 8. And we're going to close with this. He says, there is therefore right now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, whether you know this or not, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, they're italicized. That is not the original language. What he's saying is, because Jesus took your sins, he took your judgment. He took your condemnation. He took your pain. He took your shame. He took your sin. There is therefore now no condemnation. See, and he, see, here's the fight. The fight is there's a sin consciousness and then there's a righteousness consciousness. If you continue to allow yourself to be under the law, you're always going to be sin conscious. But if you understand that Jesus took your sin, he took your condemnation, he took your sickness, disease, everything is see in the gospel is Jesus and nothing else. It's not Jesus and your works. It's not Jesus and your testimony. Now we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But in the good news, it's Jesus has done everything for you and nothing and nobody else. He is your righteousness. And there is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation. No, no, no condemnation. But you're in Christ. Now, you got to decide whether you want to be righteousness conscious. Righteousness says Jesus took it. Yeah. Now, he says in, in chapter 6 now, we don't sin that grace may abound. But if you sin, you know that you are covered by the one who is the propitiation for your sin. Me, Jesus satisfied the wrath of God so he can never be angry with you because all of his hostility came out in Jesus. Yes. Yes. Somebody say I'm righteousness conscious. I'm righteousness no conscious. longer am I sin conscious. No longer am I sin and there is therefore now, therefore, therefore now no, condemnation no condemnation over my life, over my life. because I'm in Jesus. I'm in Jesus. I said, I'm in Jesus. I said, I'm in Jesus. That's good enough for me. Come on, somebody give God a praise.